Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about the first steps when you're setting up a new board and you're trying to diagnose the basics. I see a lot of people making the same mistakes over and over. So I just want to address the basic steps of what you want to do to see if your board is working and how you figure out what your problem is. So assume you got a board that you just received, you've put together yourself or it came pre-built but it's having problems and you want to know what's going on. And a lot of people are submitting questions to Discord or Facebook groups and they're making the crucial mistake of just looking at the board only and not using the apps. The apps are extremely useful. They have so much information. Here is float control, but you can do the same thing with floaty or even with vest tool. But there you got to make sure that you're looking at the app UI tab. And in there you will see, for example, we'll start with the foot sensors. And you want to make sure that both are recognized. So I'm pressing either one and I can see in the upper right and upper left corner that uh, the ADC is turning black here and I can see the actual voltage. The way it works is the measured voltage when pressed needs to be higher than the threshold. The default threshold is 2.0 volts. For some older float packages it's still 3.0 volts but you should change that to 2.0 and if it's 2.0 you want to make sure that your sensors are well above that threshold, meaning here it's 3.18. And if you let go, you want to be well below the 2.0 volts, otherwise you get ghosting. Same on the other side. So here, obviously, the sensors are perfect. The next reason why your board won't start, even though your sensors are working, so here, mine is working, but one common problem is that the controller thinks that the board is upside down and the app will tell you that. So here we can see now that the board is reported as upside down. So now even if I press those sensors, it obviously won't engage. And so if the board is upside down, that means your IMU hasn't been calibrated correctly. you got to go back to that step. But that's usually the most common reason it wouldn't work. I discovered a bug in float control as I was making this video. So look for the very next version to come out with this issue fixed. Now, if you connect with Vestool instead, then if you have a Vesk Express equipped controller, you have to make sure you are connected to the controller and not to the communication module. And then you will have this app UI tab. You see here the roll in the upper right corner. Symbol shows us upside down and the roll number is somewhere around plus or minus 180. In Floaty you can see the board symbol. You can vaguely recognize that it is upside down on the submenu symbol. There is a roll angle 177, so you can see it that way. If all that works and now your board engages but is making funny noises instead of actually riding, that means you haven't done the motor calibration. Those are your most common things. And yeah, just look at the apps and you will see exactly what's going on. And yeah, so those are the most common things. Now, one other common problem that people are troubleshooting and where they're not utilizing the abilities that the apps provide, and that is nose hunting or weird nose up or nose down behavior that you can't explain and there's a lot of factors in play make sure that you don't confuse yourself with all the possible things that could be causing it so first one way would be to just set 
use a default tune and see if it still happens again. But you don't have to do that. You can also enable showing the, disc, um, the, uh, the set points here by uh, long pressing duty cycle, for example, and float control. And now you can see which set point is in, in effect at which moment. So here you can see if things are as, as expected. And if you don't want to look at the screen while riding, you can also just screen record it. Make sure you enable audio in the screen recording. That way you can document when that weird behavior that you're noticing is occurring. And that way you can quickly figure out, is it an IMU issue or is it just one of your weird settings in your refloat package? So that should make it a lot easier to troubleshoot that. And yeah. I hope this has been helpful. See you guys next time.